Hello conservationists. I have a great ride along farm tour uh, video in store for you today. Uh, so back in May of uh, 2022, uh, Tom Roth, the retired state agronomist for the state of Kansas with the USDA NRCS, he and I uh, went down to Southwest Kansas uh, to do some, some touring of the area and see some of the agriculture and some of the soil and water conservation practices in place. And one of the things we did on that tour was visit with one of Tom's uh, longtime uh, buddies, Dave Romy, and we got a tour of, of Dave's farm uh, that he operates along with his two brothers. And uh, and this video is going to be a ride along with Dave, uh, giving us the the rundown on all the different practices they use and how they manage water and soil and uh, crop rotations and weed management and all that. So. Uh, for this video, uh, the first couple minutes, uh, it's mainly just audio. And then once we actually got into the truck uh, to do the ride along, uh, that's when I turned the video on. So the first few minutes, it's just audio. So bear with us, but I think there's a good conversation uh, that gives us some context for uh, for the rest of, of Dave Roby's uh, operation there. So, uh, so the first part will be a few minutes of audio uh, followed by uh, video from the ride along. So enjoy. No. Well, what I thought we would do, what I've got, uh, two or three different situations. Mm -hmm. uh, last summer we had uh, wheat stubble that was a, a abnormal, tall and good thick wheat, you know, for some of our irrigators. So we decided to take that off as uh, residue, okay. and because we figured we'd have pro problems trying to till through it okay. to get corn planted this year. Okay. So what we did is we took that off and baled it and sold that straw, and then we tilled it cheaper than uh, putting herbicide on to mm -hmm. control weeds through the summer. And then we had planned on planting wheat for cover. Mm -hmm. And so we got a rain about mid September and we planted about 75 pounds of wheat and uh, just let it go, never watered it at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, made a pass on it here uh, in the spring just to keep it growing. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and then we've got uh, some of those fields that we left the straw cause we figured we want to keep more cover and uh, some of that stuff with these terrible winds we had started to blow into piles. Okay. And so we took and came and had that same company uh, rake it and bale it. Mm -hmm. And then I planted some, uh, I did both oats, some at a 30, some 40, some 50 pound rates, and then wheat mm -hmm. to see which one because oats are a little bit harder to come by and a little bit more expensive mm -hmm. as the cover crop. And I wanted to see if the wheat would uh, do what I needed to do. Okay. Because I usually keep wheat on hand year round, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for planting, just for blowing and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So I did both and we can take a look at it and just see what you think. Yeah, that sounds interesting. Yeah, it's, it's uh, I think the wheat would have done fine, but the, the oats you need less. And then if you do decide you want to take that off as a forage, you know, mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot of people that want that. Yeah, that's, that's something that, you know, baling oats and selling it as a, a feedstock. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so some of the things I've been working on, so for eight years I've been plant, doing cover crop research. Mm -hmm. And so now we're going to shift, I guess, technically, and I, I struggle with, if you're harvesting and it's not really a cover crop, to me. Uh -huh. And that's the way I view it. Right. But if we're going to use annual forages for both cover and livestock feed, mm -hmm. and so we're going to kind of shift into the annual forages part of it, and mainly looking at winter cereals. Yeah. Well, this, both these situations, we, uh, they were only going to be a cover crop because we are planting, we, we used our strip-till rig, anything that's fairly sandy, mm -hmm. we use our strip-till rig to put our fertilizer on, and we plant right in those strips. Okay. And uh, this, uh, the wheat that we planted there, plus the the oats. In fact, I haven't destroyed the oats yet. The oats are still growing. Oh, really? Yeah. They've we left. Up. We left the, the. They weren't planted, uh, say March. Uh, yeah, well, that's about right. Yeah, we planted them in March. Yeah. And the wheat I planted last September, you know, at a seventy-five pound rate, and then uh, uh, we have destroyed a lot of the uh, wheat because it had was getting fairly right. big, yeah. And we didn't want to use that much moisture up because yep. it had enough to cover still. Mm -hmm. But uh, we've got some situations just within a half mile here. Oh yeah. I think if we want to hop yeah. in my pickup, 
Uh, let me uh, move good. a couple of things out of the back seat over here on this one side. Okay. I still have that quail picture that you guys uh, give us for that award for, I don't know if it's a windbreak award or what, but it's in our office. I appreciate you taking the time to show You're us around welcome. today. You're welcome. This uh, circle right here is wheat that we uh, I planted last year for cover and only put the 75 pound on it. And we decided to keep it because of water. Okay. We uh, had a decent stand. We thought, you know, we, uh, and with the price of wheat, we weren't going to have enough uh, water to uh, plant that extra corn, so we'd left it. Huh. Well, it's a good looking windbreak day. Yeah. It's a little yeah. cockeyed on that one side. It, somebody, <laughs> so, somebody drew a straight line, but they didn't make it straight with the world. <laughs> now this, uh, we, cut, we cut this half miler into thirds. The north third is uh, wheat. The south third was wheat last summer that we, uh, I planted that wheat as a cover crop and we sprayed it in its corn. And then the east third will be, uh, the east third will be, is, it was dryland milo or limited irrigation milo and it'll be dryland corn this summer. Okay. So are the new pivots ones that blew over last year? Or just people are have they're they're kind of worn out and that they're putting new. We're replacing. putting new ones in, yeah. No, they're not ones that blew over. They're just they've been out here for 25, 28 years, mm -hmm. and they're just rusting and and kind of like a vehicle and everything else and combines and. Yeah. They don't last they, forever. They and yeah, we've been replacing them. But uh, yeah, put the new on your fields here. I see. Yeah, we can. We have a good uh, manure source, and uh, we've been trying to go around to uh, these fields that are more sandy, and uh, we'll put uh, put manure on them. Okay. But this was cotton, and then we uh, put it to corn last fall, and it got hailed out, and we took it off the silage, and then we put it back to wheat for harvest, and then. It will, uh, we'll either do like we did with this, we'll uh, take the wheat off, the wheat straw, and plant it back, or, or we'll leave the straw, depends on, you know, this year doesn't look like our, our wheat is gonna be as, ta as tall, so we shouldn't have the issues of trying to get through it. Some of this wheat got, you know, four foot tall, and then it broke over, and then the wind yeah. grabbed it and blew it into piles. <laughs> Kind of like you see tumbleweeds and stuff. You yeah. Know. As one blows across the road. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now this field right here, I wanted to leave the uh, wheat straw on the west half uh, because it's more likely to blow, and I did the cover crop on the on the east half, planted wheat, and then we sprayed it out. Okay. And uh, so you kind of target your cover crops where you think it needed the most to see well where we thought we yeah. we had too much residue on this side to get through it oh okay so we left the res this west half you can see it's hillary yeah. more hills it didn't grow as tall a wheat okay. so we could get through it And this is the field of oats that uh, we tried to strip till it, put our fertilizer down and we couldn't get through it. We kept plugging up. Mm -hmm. So we had that company come in and and they had to swath, they had to actually rake it and then swath it. And they picked it up and put it in these stacks. And then I planted the triticale, mm -hmm. or not triticale, but the oats and the, and wheat. The outside perimeter is, is oats, 40 foot, and then the next 40 foot is wheat. And probably about 20 acres on this east half is wheat. 
and you can't really tell much difference between the wheat and the and the oats. So what's the rationale behind putting the perimeter in the I just in wanted the oats. to test it. Okay. <laughs> I figured the oats would probably cover more. Okay, yeah. And so I wanted more cover on the outside and I, I put a a fifty pound rate on it where the rest of the field's at a forty pound rate. Uh-huh. I just we always get more traffic on the perimeters. Yeah. You know, turning around yeah. and, and then the wind coming off of the edges of the fields and the county roads so that's where things start to blow yeah on the edges and then it just kind of like cancers will spread across and, yeah you know you've seen that now this field right here we we planted it to wheat last uh, fall, but we had some winter kill. Yeah. And so some of it uh, died early, and we lost we lost some of our cover. But it looks like to me it's still doing what it needs to be doing. You know. Mm-hmm. If we wouldn't uh, had planted weed on it, we would have had big problems. And this is a field where you're using wheat as a cover crop? Yeah. yeah. But we sprayed it early. And I'll pull up in here and should be small plants of corn right there. Okay. And there should be corn coming up in that field right there, too. Yep, see the little corn? Yeah. <laughs> so what's the rate that you plant wheat at for a, as a cover crop? I was using 75 pounds uh, yeah. because I planted early enough that I figured we'd get some tillery. Mm-hmm. And I didn't figure that 60 pounds was going to be enough. And I normally on irrigated rate, when I'm planting that time of year, I'll go with about 90 pounds. Okay. Uh, but, uh, so I just split the difference between that, yeah. uh, dry land wheat planted mid September. I usually go with about a 45 pound rate. Okay. And depending on the time of year after I start going up 10%, uh, around, uh, October 1st to the 10th, okay. I'll go up 10% on my rate depending on weekly. So if I'm planting towards the end of October, I'll, I'll uh, a lot of times put out 120 pounds of wheat. And what's a what's a typical uh, yield goal for irrigated uh, wheat out here versus we've, dryland wheat? We fertilize for 70 bushel, but we've been able to raise up to 90 to okay. even 100 pounds or 100 bushel. Uh, but we fertilize for for 70 to to 80 uh-huh. bushel. And this wheat has all been rotated back from corn. It was corn last summer. And once we cut the corn off, I'll have a, our local applicator apply 100 pounds of nitrogen and 40 pounds of FOSS. Okay. And we diss that in and, and plant right behind that. Okay. And that's our full fertility program. They said you had some fields that you put into cotton as well? We uh, had a couple of fields of cotton. Oh, well, we actually we had 500 acres of cotton two years ago. Uh-huh. And uh, it, we just, uh, I think it works in situations. But, uh, you know, we have to have the custom harvested and different things. And, uh-huh. uh, you know, I don't know if you actually save water with cotton. You may be a little bit, but you're going to have to apply it for your next crop. Yeah. For that that growing season, you're going to actually save water because you'll have, it'll go down and get all the fertilizer and the water out of the ground. And here's a 
field that I planted wheat for cover and we sprayed it out when after we planted the corn and killed it. You see the corn growing up through it? Mm -hmm. So using weed for cover out here, are you guys sort of the outlier on that or is there other farmers that do the same thing? You know, I don't know for sure uh, if there's anybody actually planting uh, wheat for cover. Uh -huh. I, they might just be leaving their stubble. But we harvest our wheat with a stripper head, so we leave as much residue in the field as we can. Okay. Where some of the neighbors are using a draper head, which cuts it a lot shorter. Yeah. So what proportion of your fields are dry land versus irrigated? Oh, probably a third to two thirds, a third dry land. Okay. But we, uh, we leave all the residue. We don't, very seldom will we ever till a a dry land field out here. Yeah. It's all herbicide and no-till. And here's another uh, field that is was planted last fall with 70 pounds or 75 pounds of uh, wheat mm -hmm. and then sprayed out. You see how the edges want to it just gets more traffic as we're turning around. Yeah. Sometimes I'll actually bump the rate on the on the perimeter mm -hmm. when I'm in the drill. See, we took all the wheat off or all the wheat straw off these fields, and in this little area, what you're seeing right here was where they stacked the bales. Uh -huh. When they came and <laughs> took the bales off, I drilled it. To, yep. You can see how much that helped it because that would just be a dust bowl right now. Yeah. How long has your family been farming out here? My dad and my uncle moved down from uh, Garden City, uh, I think it was 1952. Okay. and started farming uh, one of the first uh, corn farmers in the southwest Kansas. Oh, really? They uh, watered with uh, ditches. I was uh, I was too small to start a two-inch tube with my hand. <laughs> I'd have to use a, a ball yeah. uh, to start it. I could start an inch and a half tube, but I could never start a two-inch tube. So... I'm glad we got rid of them and got uh, flood pipe. <laughs> but we farmed this section right here and we were trying to split it up a third and two thirds. So uh, we had Milo on two thirds of it and there's wheat that will hopefully get to plant back to Milo this, this spring yet. I want to take you over to another field that we uh, planted the oats on. These roads are terrible. The wind comes in, they can't grade them very good because once they grade them, that wind blows those wind all, all boards the back stuff. in them. Yeah. yeah. So did you guys come out Monday? Yeah, I came out Monday, and we did uh, we did the, um, the self guided the auto tour for the um, grasslands. Oh, that's neat. And then yesterday we uh, started off uh, 
with the ranger and he, he took us out in the grasslands and showed us a few things and kind of interviewed him for a while. Has there been any fires over there? Um, prescribed burns, uh, but yeah, nothing that was nothing that was nothing unplanned. That it didn't sound like accidentally. Yeah. Yeah, you can see where this uh, third of this is weed stubble and that uh, rotates this ground here. And then we interviewed a Dust Bowl survivor. Oh, you did? Uh, that was pretty interesting. And then we spoke with another lady that we thought was a Dust Bowl survivor, but her husband was. And it sounds like she moved out here in 45. Uh, so we spoke with her for a while. And then turns out her, her son was a soil conservationist out here for a while, too. So oh, that's neat. He showed up, and we talked for another hour or so with him. So when did the Dust Bowl... Do they officially say it ended? It's basically early 30s to 1940. 1940. Uh, I think. Yeah, I think it was like 32 to 40, basically. Uh huh. But yeah, there was there was obviously dust storms before and dust storms after. Sure. Yeah. Like that. Like that eight-year period that was the the major drought. Those dates sound right to you, Tom? Yeah. And see, this is the, where this tractor's running is the, where I'm gonna be planting after I get done with where I'm at. These fields that are corn on corn, what we do with them is we take a culture chisel and we culture chisel our anhydrous ammonia on, and then we take a VT to smooth out the tracks mm -hmm. and chop up stalks and stuff. And then it sets until we get ready to uh, plant and we use a, a sweet plow which has six foot blades on it and it comes in and uh, kills any volunteer or weeds or whatever ahead of the planter and uh, you can see the residue that it leaves on top mm -hmm. and so we have we don't have any trouble with that kind of ground blowing That field, I, I should have just, uh, well, we'll see on the east side. It's another one that uh, I planted for cover and we destroyed. And... Some of these uh, areas where we have more ground than we do water, we stagger our planting. This uh, northeast quarter of this section was planted April 20th. And uh, the southeast quarter will be planted May 20th, May 25th. And what we're doing is we're trying to spread out the water needs okay. of our corn crop. But just because your well is like is yeah. running out of water? So well, just we just to... don't, we, we have like 700 gallons for this whole section. Okay. And so we can raise two circles of, of wheat and then two circles of corn uh, if we stagger that planting of this corn because right right now we're watering this half and getting a uh, or this quarter and getting a pro pup file and then we'll come in and plant this one and this one won't need any uh water during the growing season for about a month after that one so hopefully we've got it through the tassel period and and the peak water use before we have to put water on this one. Yeah. Dave, how do you do your irrigation water management? Well, we uh, we use probes and we use a crop consultant. And uh, basically we run at a deficit during the summer. We're running off of soil moisture and we just apply whatever we can. And we plant different populations uh, this field right over here uh, is planted at a 26,000 seeds per acre because it's a, a four to 500 gallon per minute circle, 122 acres, where this field is planted at a 28,000 seed per acre because it's got about five to 600 gallons. So we'll stagger or we'll plant uh, lower populations where we don't have as much water. 
And if we do get rain, a lot of these hybrids that we plant flex. So if we get more rain, they'll make a bigger ear, you know, and, mm -hmm. and uh, we've raised 285 bushel corn off of 28,000 seeds per acre, yeah. which it used to 20 years ago, we were planting 34 and 35,000 seeds per acre. But you can see here where we uh, planted this wheat and then sprayed it out. And we haven't planted it yet, but we, we didn't want the wheat to use up any more moisture. You guys have any issues with salinity or sodicity out here at all? With what? Salinity or sodicity? Well, we're, our pHs are probably anywhere from seven and a half to eight and a half. Okay. So we don't. I haven't really, just driving by a field, it nothing looks like it would be, but just kind of curious if it's a problem that you guys run into. No. And see that uh, planter back there. This is going to be dry land corn this summer. And uh, hopefully we get a rain to bring it up because it's it's being planted into dry right now. Mm -hmm. All these corners here were dryland milo last year and they'll be rotated to dryland wheat this fall. Well, that's kind of what we're doing in a nutshell there as far as, and I think we're gonna probably do more of that uh, planting that wheat for cover. That seemed to work out pretty good. Uh, depending on after wheat harvest, we'll evaluate and see how tall our stubble is and whether we think we can, if we can just leave the stubble, that's the main thing because we're not using up moisture with the cover crop. Yeah. And, uh, but if we can't get through it, then yeah. uh, we need to find a way that we can have cover there for this time of year and and uh, still be able to plant the corn. So what's your what's your biggest issue as far as weed management out here? Well I would say uh, broadleaves, kochia, and, and pigweeds. Okay. You know, those are the ones that are the, especially in the summer months mm -hmm. when they grow up, you know, we're uh, trying to control them with, you know, glyphosate and 2,4-D is uh, a challenge. Yeah. So we've been going with some gramoxone, which you know, you have to double your rate of water and then you gotta be real careful with the drift. But it works pretty good and it's it's not that expensive, but uh, tillage is cheaper, but you know, like you say, you, you wanna keep that residue. Yeah. And moisture, you know, so. But you can see right here, this field was a, a dry land wheat, but it was a, such a good field. See how it blew over? Mm -hmm. And it's blown part of this over into piles. Yeah. See, this is gonna be a challenge to try to plant that. Cause there's some places out there a foot deep and I don't know if I can get through it. Mm -hmm. And then there's places that are bare. Yeah. And that's what happened to some of that, where we planted the oats. Well, this is where you try to rake it up and yeah, sell that's it where we straw. raked it, and I really don't want to do that to this one. I'll yeah, have to keep the cover out there because, but I don't know what it's I'm going to do. Some big, it'll about 
50 feet out, there's some really big humps. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, I see that. And it's mm -hmm. almost like some of the soil is blown into them, making them even bigger. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know if the soil is blown or if it's just the straw. Well, there's big humps on the. You can see all those big humps yeah. there, but like in, right in front of it. Might be a little bit of soil. Down. Yeah. Yeah, you could be, yeah, right here. I mean, you there's can not see. a lot, but there's some. Yeah. Yeah. But it's more of, yeah, like you said, the, the it, straw it blew over. over. It's, you know, it snaps over from the wind and then it just keeps kind of popping along the top until it hits something and yeah. blows up. Yeah, because I remember we were coming down to Guyman one time, and right over by Spearville, somebody had harvested a, what was probably a really good wheat crop, and it was tall straw, mm -hmm. and the snow came, and it just snapped it over. And, and laid it flat. Laid it flat, you know, trying to plant through something like that gets blown. Yeah, yeah. Most of your corners in CRP, Dave? All of our uh, small corners except for eight. We've got, and then these ones back here in the west here, they've never been broke out. So those were all uh, uh, native. But uh, anything that's uh, over into this area is uh, CRP if they're a small corner. There's the two brothers right there. I'd stop and talk, but I'm gonna probably, if we're, you see what you need to see or? Uh, I think so, yeah. I might go ahead and head back over there and get on the planter then. And... Yeah, we don't want to hold you up for getting ahead of a storm. <laughs> well, you want to be more than three days mute. Yeah, yeah, yeah.